heaven and earth. Amen. People of God, it is gift and good to be together as we gather on this sunny, beautiful Sunday, as apparently we're going to be preparing now for a snowstorm. So, but it's good. It's good that we can be together today and that we can worship and enjoy the beauty of God's creation today as we gather in God's house and in God's presence and amongst all of us as God's people. Amen. I have just a few announcements um, that I just want to highlight and bring to your attention prior to entering into a time of worship this morning. Um, our membership class, we're going to wrap that up this morning in the upper room where we met two weeks ago. So I think you know where that is. If you need a refresher, let me know and we'll wrap that up this morning. Also, as February wraps up and uh, as we end the month, our mission of the month for um, Super Bowl, um, the soup drive is wrapping up in the next few days. So you still have a couple days to bring in cans of soup. Thank you to all of you. As you can see in the back, we'll put a picture in the weekly so you can see the enormous amount of soup, the abundant amount of soup that we're going to get from point A to point B across the street at Happy to Help Food Pantry. And uh, the missions team will match whatever is back there. So that see that picture and then imagine it to be doubled and uh, we'll get that over there. So thank you for your um, gener excuse me, generosity with this. Um, which brings us to March. And March, we're going to be starting a new mission of the month in which we are going to be supporting the work of Church World Services. Church World Services has been involved in the relief and support efforts in Turkey and Syria um, following the devastating earthquake. So that is the mission of the month that the missions team wanted to support. So any monetary gifts during the month of March, that is marked missions will go towards Church World Services and the earthquake relief efforts in Turkey and Syria. I, mean, I had to make a list this morning. All right, so the sound system. This is for friends on Zoom. We have the camera up and running. It was a quick and easy fix, and we have it repaired. We have it, so hopefully you can see, hopefully you can hear. In that process, we have been talking with the sound company about some additional ways that we can make sure that you can hear the congregational responses, but that's going to take some time. And so uh, bear, bear with us, and uh, we are grateful for your patience, but we think everything else is all worked out. And uh, so let us know. All right. Another building update, just to let you know, the consistory did meet this past week as our, at our uh, monthly consistory meeting to discuss the elevator. And uh, we have narrowed it down from four proposals and, and three different companies that made some proposals and estimates. We have it narrowed down to two. And this week they're doing some more work about talking with the two companies specifically with specific questions so that we can know the best option and the best make the best informed decision that is the best for fair street we do know that it's going to involve replacing the elevator that much we can tell you we're going to be replacing it um, <laughs> because we know that if even if it wasn't if it was repaired y'all still wouldn't get on it and uh, so <laughs> so in that regard the consistory is attentive and has been working diligently in in finding the best solution for that. So the final up, um, announcement that I want to share with you is one that is for all of you, Fair Street. So yesterday, um, actually, let me back up. For the past eight plus years, some of you may have known, some of you might not even have known, but downstairs in the parish room every Saturday for the past eight years. And then when we've had a funeral up here, we've had to bump people over to the Crosby room in the education building. There has been a church that has been worshiping here at Fair Street, a Spanish-speaking Seventh-day Adventist church. They've been worshiping here every Saturday and um, sometimes throughout the once or twice throughout the week over the course of the past eight years. Yesterday was their final Saturday worshiping in Fair Street's building as they have found a different location and um, that will better suit their needs and, and allow them to grow 
it was with very mixed and hard emotion and decision making that they had come to this decision. But as I gathered with them yesterday, they prayed a blessing and offered us blessing and prayers, and I did the same on our behalf. Um, they gave some beautiful flowers that are in the sanctuary this morning. That's where the flowers are from this morning. And I gifted them with uh, love your neighbor coffee mugs. And as a reminder that they are a neighbor and we will always love and welcome them if they ever need to come back. But I wanted to share this. They also presented a plaque. And uh, while my name is on it, it really should say Fair Street Reformed Church. So I wanted to share this with you and read what they, what they, how they wanted to recognize all of you this morning. That the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Spanish Kingston Company, recognizes Reverend Kendra and Fair Street Reformed Church in gratitude for your support during these beautiful eight years. For us, it has been a blessing and a privilege to use your facilities. Thank you for everything you did to accommodate us and for making us feel comfortable in your facilities. May God continue to, bl to bless in your life and guide your ministry. So I share that with you all because you all have extended hospitality and welcome and uh, have opened the door to the parish room and quickly closed it because we forgot. And as quickly as I left them, an hour later, I went down and opened the door and realized they were still there. And But they, it has been a beautiful thing. So thank you to all of you for your hospitality and your welcome to neighbors in this community. I think that's all of the announcements. Everything else will be in your in your bulletin or in the weekly as it comes out in the email tomorrow, or it will be posted on our website tomorrow as well. So friends, people of God, as we gather, it is a beautiful day where we can gather as God has breathed us into this place and into this space. Whether this is your first time worshiping with us or you have been here all along, Regardless of who you are, where you come from, who you love, where you live, how you get around, the language that you speak, whatever it is that you think hinders you from belonging and being here in this place, please know and believe that your presence is a gift. And we are grateful to God that you are here with us in these moments. And so whether your week has been filled with joy and celebration or grief and sorrow, anxiety and uncertainty, whatever it is that your week has held, it is in these moments where we can pause and we can set aside the chaos of our lives and the chaos of the world. And we can rest and settle in and be open to hearing from God in these moments. And so one of the ways that we do that to set aside the chaos is to take that deep breath and we breathe in God's love and in God's grace and in God's welcome and we breathe out all the stuff that our bodies have been clinging to so tightly all week long. And so I invite you to do that with me as we prepare to enter into worship, breathing in and out. Breathing in God's love and in God's grace and in God's welcome. And breathing out all the stuff of our lives and being greeted by God. Grace and peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and is to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to rise as you are able as we join in our call to worship this morning, and then we will follow the call to worship with our opening hymn, 253, Lead Me to Calvary. Gather to remember and share stories of faith. Rejoice in the goodness of loving of the loving God. Before our stories began, there was God. Through all our days, God walks with us. Worship the one who gives and sustains life. Sing praises to the one who is our refuge. There is no place we can go where God is not. Amid life's terrors, God promises hold true. Delight in God, whose protection we enjoy. Dance with God, who frees us for new possibilities. We call out to God, expecting to be heard. We listen, knowing there is truth to be received.
seated and I'm going to invite the children to come on up. Come on up. Miss Leslie is here today and she has a word for you. Here you go. Come on up. What are you up? I know. Wow. <laughs> That's good because now we get lots of answers, right? So here's my first question. Does the word paradise? Mean? Okay. Paradise is like when like something so good that like you never want to leave. Oh, that's about the best answer we can come up with. Anybody else have a definition for? Mm -hmm. Paradise is kind of like heaven in a way because it's like everything you could ever need. No, I think because it's like everything you could ever need. Anybody else? Where everything is perfect? Where everything is perfect. Absolutely. So, you think paradise looks the same to everybody? No. Can you say that louder? <laughs> what would paradise look like for you guys? Anybody have? Um. Being in a really big house and having a room that's as big as a soccer field. Anybody else have an idea what, what paradise would look like for them? And go types in my own personal boat, like, yeah. I love that. Anybody else? A big 70 inch flat screen TV and a king size bed. <laughs> Well, in one place in the Bible, Jesus tells the disciples that his father's house has many rooms. And I think that that's because every room would look different so that people who think paradise looks like a snow covered mountain that you can ski, there'd be a room for that. Or maybe a room with a TV and a king size bed, or maybe a room with a soccer field. So, the other thing that Jesus did tell us about paradise is that he was going to paradise to prepare a place for each one of us. So, each one of us is going to have a special place that Jesus made for us. But, that's about all the Bible does tell us. It doesn't tell us what heaven looks like or exactly what it feels like. All we know is that Jesus is making a place that will be just for us. So most of us who have faith 
know that paradise is wherever God is, wherever Jesus is, wherever he's prepared a place for us, that's paradise. So even here, we're here this morning, when you're at school, when you're at home, when you're on the soccer field, when you're doing something that seems perfect, it is because Jesus is right there with you, isn't he? He's walking with you. He's listening to you. He's caring for you. When you're sad, you're still, you can still see a piece of paradise because all you have to do is know that Jesus is there, loving you, caring about you, taking care of you. And we get to see in those moments that are perfect a little bit of what heaven is going to look like all the time. Sure, we have our days when we're sad, but if we remember that Jesus is there with us, we can feel the joy and the love and the happiness that will be ours forever when it's our time to go home to heaven. So let's talk to Jesus right now in a word of prayer. Jesus, we know that you have prepared a place for us that'll be ours forever with unlimited joy and happiness. But help us to see in the moments of this life where you are, that you're there with us, that our, your joy and your love and your caring can be a part of our everyday lives. Help us to remember that wherever we are, you're there with us. And a piece of paradise is there with us because you are holding us close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so you guys are going to go downstairs and uh, over to the other education building for children in worship, okay? And so I think it's with Miss Valerie today, and she'll show you the way. So sometimes it's easy um, to forget things, right? I mean, have, has anybody ever forgotten something in the last six hours? I mean, come on, all of us have probably, right? But we forget things and we're forgetful people and for some of us it comes easier than others um, to forget. Others it's easier to remember for, than others, right? But often what happens then in our lives is when we forget things, sometimes it's easy to get defeated and discouraged and then we forget how much God loves us. And we forget how that the very fact that God is with us and that God will hear our prayer and forgive us and pour down mercy and grace. And so it's in that moment and with that reminder that we can remember and we can approach the cross boldly as we pray the prayer of confession together. Oh God, we have journeyed to far places and lived as if you were not accompanying us. We have wasted the inheritance you entrusted to us and used other people as if they were things. Then we complain to you as if our dilemmas were your work fault rather than our own. O oh God, we are not worthy to be your children. Forgive us and grant us just a small place in your love, which we do not deserve. Amen. People of God, hear this good news and the assurance of God's love and God's grace that God has heard your prayer and you are deserving of God's love and God's grace. And so in these moments, as God has heard your prayer and your hearts cry, God has poured down grace and love into your lives to give you a brand new opportunity to go from the spot where you are to go forward in your life, living your lives filled with gratitude, living as God calls us to live 
as we are reminded by the Apostle Paul's words to the people in Philippi as we read these words together. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we can gather in your presence. And so we pray, O oh God, that you reveal yourself to us in these moments as we hear your word. Open our eyes that we might see you, our ears that we might hear your word, and our hearts and our minds that we might know and experience your presence in these moments. So as we gather around the cross, to hear the words that your son spoke. We give this time and space to you and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. So this morning on this first Sunday of Lent, we find ourselves back at the foot of the cross to hear yet another word that Christ spoke well on the cross. As we are going through the seven last words of Christ during this Lenten season. So just a few days ago on Ash Wednesday, we heard the first word, Father, forgive them, for they don't have any idea what they're doing. Okay, so that was my embellishment. But Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They were Jesus' first words on the cross that were directed in a prayer to God asking and reminding God of God's grace that only God can give. So if you happen to miss it and you're curious, it is up on the website. There's a recording on the worship page. But today, on this first Sunday of Lent, we now pause to hear the second word of Christ. And as I shared on Wednesday, a little framework um, in a to, to frame it and to remind us what the setting looked like in these moments. Crucifixion was intended to be a public performance. It was a way to remind and keep the people in line. Don't do this, otherwise this is gonna happen. But also, it was common, it was more common that people would be taken outside the city gate and stoned to death outside the city. And so crucifixion was saved for the vilest of the vilest of the vilest of criminals. In which today we hear from both of the criminals who are being crucified with Jesus on this day. So these events, these last words take place while Jesus is on the cross on, at the place on Golgotha, which is called the skull. As burial was also not necessarily common, bodies were often left to waste and let nature eventually take its course, leaving only the bones, the skull. So the entire scene that takes place during this time is filled with the grating moments, from the cries of the people, the casting of lots, the sign that was posted above Jesus, is a complete mockery of Jesus, of who he is, and there is a public shaming that takes place for the entire Jewish people. But Jesus, as only Jesus can do, in grace and in love, speaks his first word, not to the criminals on either side, 
not to the crowd, not to the guards, not to the soldiers or the disciples, but to God the Father in prayer. And now today, as we saw Jesus do throughout his entire ministry, he speaks to the least of us, the criminal to his son. So I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel according to Luke in chapter 23, verses 39 to 43, in which you will afterwards, you will be invited to stand as we sing our hymn of preparation, Jesus, Remember Me, in which we will sing that through twice, two times with the organ, and then the third time without the organ, and just our voices. So listen to these words from the Gospel according to Luke in chapter 23. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think I've shared this with some of you before, but um, three and a half years ago in September when I had sustained accident injuries from my bike accident, um, in which I sustained um, a brain injury and a broken elbow, one of the things that happened, the, it was either the night that I woke up in the hospital or the next morning when I was in the hospital, when I was getting um, an MRI, the only way that I could keep calm was to try, the only way previously to my example, my accident, to try and remain calm in one of those big tunes is to recite scripture. And that's what would keep me grounded and not from feeling claustrophobic, right? So now, the day after this accident, I'm laying in the tube and I'm thinking, the Lord do something. And I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember the Lord bless you and keep you. I couldn't remember the words to any scripture, and I thought, how in the world am I ever going to recover if I can't remember scripture? And how, and now with a broken elbow and I can't raise my arm, how am I going to be a pastor if I can't recite a blessing that I recite every Sunday and raise my arms to give you that blessing? If I forget this, what kind of a person will I be? This is what went through my mind as I'm laying in this tube trying to wake up from a brain injury. But this is the reality of what was happening. When we forget something, when I was forgetting, I thought, surely 
my career is over. Now, as you all know, I can clearly recite the Lord bless you and keep you and remember it, but it has taken time. We don't like to forget things, right? In fact, if you look up on the web why we forget things, you're going to discover that there are an abundance of reasons. It could be from stress. It could be from an injury. It could be from lack of sleep. It could be from depression or other health reasons. It could be from getting, um, being tired or, these are my non-professional words, from our tired and aging brains. The reality is, no matter what it's called, forgetting is frustrated, frustrating and painful, both for the one who forgets and the one who is on the receiving end of being forgotten. Right? Both are equally hard and painful. Oftentimes, though, one might use the phrase, oh, I forgot, as a simple and yet easy and obvious excuse that we like to use why we didn't get the work done. As we, what is the word? I forgot. The reality, though, is that even though we like to use this phrase, I forgot, in life, when it comes to forgetting and potentially being forgotten, no one likes it. Because no one wants to be forgotten. To be forgotten can make a person feel unseen, overlooked, invisible, even invaluable, worthless. To be forgotten means that we aren't remembered. But we do everything possible to try and remember, right? To remember things and people. We tie strings around our finger. We make lists. We write things down. We exercise. We try to get more sleep. We change our diet. We track. We keep track of details in our notebooks. And then we forget to take the notebooks with us. We take pictures to try and capture the moment so we don't forget. We change our medications. We take vitamins and supplements to help us with our brain and memory. We want to remember. Right? And more importantly, we want to be remembered. So in our reading this morning, we find Jesus on the cross with the criminal on each side of him. The first one calls out and over to Jesus, hey, if you're the one everyone says you are, then maybe you ought to save yourself and get us out of here too. Right? Save you, yourself and us, almost as if to say, hey, I see you, I'm going to honor you, but it's transactional because I honored you and I acknowledge you, now you have to do something for me, and I would really like it if you could just get me out of this situation now. That's the first criminal. Jesus, though, he doesn't even acknowledge that. He doesn't respond. But the other criminal on the other side, the second guy looks at him, and after reprimanding his colleague, his criminal cohort, he looks at Jesus and he's like, I see you. I know who you are. You don't deserve to be up here. But Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you are in paradise, when you come into the kingdom. Remember me, Jesus. I know that you might have a thousand other things to think about right now, and because we're dying, you might not remember even this conversation, but please, please don't forget me. And while death is imminent for Jesus and the criminal, the criminal didn't ask for justice. The criminal didn't ask for relief from pain. He simply said, remember me. Maybe thinking, it's okay, Jesus, even if you remember me tomorrow. Today's not that, like, we don't know how long we're going to be up here on this cross and when we die, but you, know, I'm, you can remember me tomorrow, but just remember me. 
And unlike where Jesus didn't respond to the first criminal, he looks over. Now, this is where we might do well to remember that crucifixion isn't pain free. It's a form of asphyxiation. The arms are, they're hanging by their arms, and the whole point is, is that it puts pressure on their lungs and, and eventually allows them to not breathe. So to breathe, let alone talk, is challenging. So for this conversation and any words that Jesus speak take, that take place require work. But Jesus looks over and sees the man and promises this second criminal, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today it will be okay, and you will be with me. I see you, and I won't forget you. You will be remembered. So as people of instant gratification, we want things now, right? This criminal wasn't in the here and now. He, he just said, I don't really deserve this, but I just pray that you'll remember me and remember me when it's convenient for you. But Jesus says, today, you won't have to wait, but today, you will be in my presence. You will be surrounded, loved, and welcomed, and God will take action and welcome and love you. Here's what the criminal and even us today maybe didn't and don't realize. That to be remembered by God means that God not only remembers and holds close, but takes action. The act of remembering for God is not just God having a passing thought about us. It's not as though God is like, oh, I remembered you. Yes, okay, on to the next person. It's not a passing thought. It's a continuous acting thought and remembering and a will to act on that reminder and plea of being remembered. The action, constantly remembering, and grace and love and welcome and presence this act of remembering will take place today, not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, not a month from now, but today, here and now. In the most current and present of times, God does, God will, and God will always remember you. While a prisoner might have to wait for their sentence or their conviction to be lifted, or we might have to wait for test results from doctors or to hear from a friend or wait for a loved one to come home, Jesus is saying, for, for this, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait to be remembered by God. Like when you wait in the line at the grocery store or for dinner to finish cooking, for the work day to end, for the school day to be over, whatever it is that you wait for, you won't have to wait to be remembered by God. The very words of your acknowledging me and asking me to be present in your life brings this instant presence of my Father into your life. And it is as if Jesus is saying today, not tomorrow, not the day after that, you will be with me. You will be able to find space in my presence and we all know that wherever I am, and whenever you are in relationship with me, there I am. That's paradise. Paradise, like in the garden in the beginning of time, is when and where we are in relationship with God. Let me say that again. Paradise is where and when we are in relationship with God, and God is present with us. And I know, I think, you know, I thought paradise was, well, half of us would find out, right? <laughs> yes, paradise is both, isn't it? Because we can have a glimmer of paradise when we are on this earth and God is in our presence and with us. 
but also we will have got, be, be in the existence and presence of God for eternity in eternal paradise. So yes, it is both here and there. That's why we hear the phrase, the kingdom of heaven is here, and heaven is near. Because when we find ourselves in God's presence, we might be well to discover that we are in paradise. Not only will you be with me today, but because you will be with me, you will catch a glimpse of paradise and know that it will be okay. The thief saw Jesus for who he was and all that Jesus could do and acknowledged and asked Jesus to be and asked Jesus that he would be remembered. And Jesus responded. You now some of you are thinking, but wait, I thought that Jesus descended to the dead. Remember that line that we talked about a few weeks ago? But remember that line that we talked about a few weeks ago in the Apostles' Creed wasn't in the Bible, right? And it was added to the Apostles' Creed later on. So yes, it can be very confusing. But remember that line that was added is for the very act of love and grace for us that Jesus descended to the dead and endured being abandoned by God so that we don't ever have to experience being abandoned or left or forgotten by God. This is Jesus assuring the criminal that he doesn't have to worry about being abandoned by God, even if it was in the most final moments of his life. God will see and God will remember and God will love and welcome this man and be present with him. So friends, people of God, to be in paradise and be in God's presence wherever God is. Yes, par paradise of afterlife, eternally in God's presence, which can tell us it's never too late to turn to God. And paradise of God being present with us in the here and now. So Jesus offering a criminal space to be welcomed and loved by God, and again reminding us that there is nothing that we can do that can separate us from God's love and God's grace and the welcome that God gives in the here and now and in eternity. Here is the hope and the comfort that we can hold today as we stand at the foot of the cross, eavesdropping on this exchange. Jesus sees us, and Jesus hears us, and will always remember us. And in the act of remembering, we will always welcome and be welcomed and love and receive grace. And there is nothing, again, as the Apostle Paul writes, there is nothing that will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And because of this, we are seen. This means that when, when someone forgets us or we forget someone else, God will always remember us and love and welcome and extend grace into our lives, being with us. And when we forget God, because we get too busy in our lives and we get distracted with things, God will still remember us, and God will still love us, and God will still welcome us and extend God's grace and be with us. So on the darkest of days, when we feel alone, when we feel broken and hurt, weary, like we can't catch a break, like life, the hits just keep coming. These words of Jesus today you will be with me. Today I see. Today I will remember and I will love. I will be with you today and always. And shine a beacon of hope and light into the darkness of our lives. So this week, as you continue this journey through the end, on the days when life is hard and you are feeling forgotten, 
On the days when life is weary and you feel alone or overwhelmed, on the days when you feel like you've screwed up so bad and have done the unforgivable, the unthinkable, when you are struggling to catch your breath, whether from our anxiety or because your oxygen levels are low. And you cry out to God, may your prayer be, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you will hear the response. Today, my child, you will be with me. Today, you will be with me. Amen. God, in your faithfulness, we thank you that you don't forget us. So keep remembering us day in and day out. We give this journey to you. Amen. As we heard from God's word, one of the many responses we have many responses that we can live into as we hear God's word. One is in prayer, one is going out and living into our call in the world. The other one is a way in which we respond through our gifts and our offerings so that we can support the work and the ministry of the church so that we can proclaim to the world that God has not forgotten anyone and loves and welcomes each one. So let's get back to God as we are able for the gifts that God has blessed us with.
holy and gracious God, for these gifts we give you thanks and we pray that you bless them for the work of your people amongst your people. And all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. As I shared, another way in which we can respond is by being in prayer for and with and alongside one another. And so in the bulletin on that last page, you see the in our prayer section that gets updated on a fairly regular basis with um, different requests and, um, and updates. And so I think the only thing to add is that we can, as as the people in Ukraine have officially repassed the year um, of war in their land, and so just to continue to be in prayer for the people in Ukraine and the many people who have fled and have found a new home in America and other neighboring countries. So with that, my friends, people of God, let's go to God in prayer. But in your faithfulness on this day, we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for the hope that we have. And we thank you that you remember us. We thank you for the sun that shines so beautifully on this day. And we thank you for the warmth of our homes and the, the food that's on our table and for many just the abundance that you pour into our lives. So well, we come to you with gratitude and acknowledging the many good things that are in our lives and good people that are in our lives. We also come holding the balance of the tension of good and wearisome. And so for all the things that we are each holding in these days, we just pray that we can release them and place them in your care, trusting you to mold and shape as you see fit, encouraging us and reminding us that you are with us through the midst of this. So yes, we thank you for the tension of the good and the, the frustrating or whatever it is that we all hold. As we move into this week, we pray that you be with the ones who will be out traveling as the snow approaches and uh, that you will just keep people safe, that you keep the road crew safe and the first responders safe and that all who need to travel and uh, surround each one with your protection. And on this day, O oh God, we pray for the people of Ukraine that you continue to surround, strengthen, keep safe as war continues to ravage in their land. For the people in Turkey and Syria as they continue to recover and, and heal and figure out what's next after such a devastating earthquake, we pray your healing and your peace and your hope. For the many cans of soup that are gathered in the back and the many more that will be added to it as they make their way across the street, we pray that you will bless each recipient of these cans of soup and that you will continue to bless the work of the Happy to Help Food Pantry as they open their doors each week to welcome and provide nourishment and abundance of food to the people in this community. And for our brothers and sisters from the Spanish-speaking church, the Seventh-day Adventist church that has worshipped here, we pray your blessings. We pray that you will continue to bless and nourish and flourish their congregation and their witness in this world. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for each one and how they have blessed us as well. So for these and many more, we place them in your care. For Bev, as she continues and begins treatment this, this upcoming week, and for many who are either waiting for test results or anticipating different surgeries or procedures, we pray that you breathe your healing spirit and your presence to surround, strengthen, and sustain each one. Face all these and all the things that are heavy in our hearts and the joys that we hold as well. We place them in your care. 
giving thanks that you hear our prayers, just as you hear our prayer now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, our sending hymn, number 270. Oh, how he loves you and me. We're going to sing that through twice. practices that I'm doing during the season of Lent is to read through a book, The Lives We Actually Have, A Hundred Blessings for Imperfect Days. It's by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. And I shared a blessing um, on Ash Wednesday, and uh, this one seemed to fit. And so before the benediction, hear these, this blessing that both Kate and Jessica have written. It's entitled, For When You Feel Forgotten by God. I don't know how to say this any other way. This is too much. I'm in a body that needs healing, in a relationship that needs restoring, in a whole world that needs redeeming, and I am in over my head. And I feel jealous when others seem to have it all together, have lives that seem to be working in their favor. What about me, Lord? God, please start it now. The promised healing, restoration, redemption, I can't wait much longer. Blessed are we who pray like a faith-filled child. Help me feel better soon. Heal me from the pain I suffer and let me see good days again. Send relief through the competent hands of professionals whose training has prepared them and whose disposition propels them to seek out the answers that can make a difference for me and for others. Restore the brokenness between me and the people I struggle to love. When caring for my actual neighbor seems too big an ask, when my family is frustrating and colleagues difficult, when my kids drive me nuts and my partner is selfish, when my friends let me down and my mentors disappoint me, when I feel alone wishing I had what others do. Redeem the whole world alongside me, the old and the young, the sorry and the sad, the angry, the vengeful, the snide, the mindless, the innocent, the misguided, the cruel and powerful, the weak and frail, the prisoners and protesters, the politicians and police, the scientists and engineers, the neighbors and doc the nurses and doctors, the workers and the unemployed, all the sick, the hungry, poor and homeless, the lonely and the dying, every soul in all your creation. Oh God, let your goodness prevail. Blessed are we in over our heads and do all that we can do. Lament honestly and pray continually and be truly glad for others when their relief comes, when their relationships are restored or when they experience a measure of peace. For we are not diminished by their fortune, 
but rather emboldened to pray. Me too, Lord. Receive this blessing. It is for you. Then pray, then pray it for someone else to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God's peace be with you today. Amen.